the question that we've been asked is, uh, you know, how do we use the asset payable feature, uh, you know, in ULA? Now, the asset payable feature is, let's say that you went ahead and bought some uh, big license or something like that that you're going to use in the future. Uh, let's assume that like, you know, it's a process server license or a divorce mate license or something like that. You brought that in bulk and then you're going to later on distribute it. In that case, what you would do is you'd actually enter that asset purchase under asset as a prepayment purchase like you know in this case i'm going to use uh, uh, you know uh, let's say a process server as an example i will say 500 dollars was purchased and it was purchased on whatever day let's say it was purchased on first of october uh, you can give a description saying that hey uh, purchase of a process server from uh, process uh, uh, server incorporation uh, and you can say it was process server in combination maybe the check that you wrote to them and you can hit the service uh, you know submit button clearly when you do that you see the asset payable is now recorded now when you even click on the description it tells you that's obviously a credit out of your whatever account that you paid it and the debit is on the asset right now once you bought that asset that asset can be used for two purposes it might be used for actually paying uh, you know an expense from your business perspective or it could be from a disbursement for a client now when it's from your business perspective for some reason i know process server is a bad example here but like you know if you would use that for business perspective you would do what we call an asset uh, you know periodic transfer to expense you would say hey i am transferring uh, 250 dollars you know with hst accordingly like you know let me put it on top here so that it will down calculate the hst right and this date might be on the third, right? Like, you know, and now you would choose process server as the account from where you want to transfer it to the appropriate, uh, you know, category, right? Like in this case, like, you know, I'm going to choose some category and, and, and transfer that asset as an expense. And when I do that, that's where the appropriate taxes are transferred to. So that like, you know, when I do my HST reporting, it can be there. Now, this is when you actually transfer it on, uh, you know, a very normal expense, like, you know, which is an office expense. Now, you could do the same thing in a matter as well. In a matter, let's say that that same expense was not done for office, but was actually done for a business reason. You could say, hey, it was a prepayment to disbursement. And in this case, you could again pick process server, right? And you can say, hey, uh, the pre-tax amount, uh, you need to calculate, uh, 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 you know, uh, the total so that like you know it so here you enter uh, you know uh, the pre-tax amounts let's say it is 221 23 so that will add up to uh, you know the total of uh, 250 dollars right and similarly you enter the same thing here 221.24 and it calculates that and then now you can say this is a disbursement or you can just say process server right process server and now when you hit the save button you will see now the disbursement expense also transferred from the same account so now when i go back to my accounting i now see that you know two 250 dollars equaling to uh, the 500 dollar that i purchased one was an office expense and other was uh, a disbursement and you clearly see here this is only affecting your general account and storing that as a prepaid asset, okay? And when it's time to actually record that as an expense, that's when the HSD is actually posted.